So, now in practice, we can of course not just have a single filter that we can put to all locations in an image, but multiple of them. Now here we have a diagonal filter we can apply to all places here. And we find that there's a lot of diagonal-like things, well, along this diagonal. And we can see that there's something like a checkerboard pattern right in the middle, and we can see that there's a lot of those diagonal elements kind of along this diagonal. And now you can say a convolutional layer basically says now we can apply all of them at the same time. Now like these will of course be put together into a tensor and the output of this will also of course be put into a tensor like that. And incidentally the image, if it was a color image, will also already be, uh, be a tensor, namely RGB versus space. Now I should also mention there's the chance to add a relu right after uh, after doing the convolution, where we can say we do the convolutions at all places and then we put it through a relu. There's other places where we could put a relu in such a confinet. Now, there's something missing so far. No, so this will tell us, oh look, there's places where that's a really good fit for that feature, and there's other places that are a really bad fit for the feature. But we are still in this high dimensional space. And also we don't have any invariance yet. No? So what we have is what's called equivariance. So if we take the same stimulus, we move it a little bit, gives us exactly the same output, only just like slightly shifted. Namely, if we move by one pixel, it will be moved by one pixel in this representation. But we want some invariance. Now, like, because as we had in the example in the beginning, we want that things that just sh rearrange things a little bit should produce very similar activities. So how could we get there? Well, for that, there's the idea of max pooling. How does max pooling work? We take these first two by two image uh, uh, convolution results, and we take the maximum of that, and we the best uh, the best one here is one, and we write that into the output of max polar. Now we do that next for the next square here, and there's definitely nothing like a diagonal in uh, of that kind here, and we do it, and so on and so forth. Again, potentially worries about padding, but we assume that now here we have zero padding on the outside. And then we can do that, that kind of max uh, polling for all possible locations. Now, how many parameters did we just use? Now, how many extra parameters do we need for that? Well, zero. No, because all we did is we took the max within that area. That's not a free parameter. No, we took the max within that area. That's not a free parameter and so forth. So, this is zero free parameters, which is very nice because it gives us a feature that we are looking for, namely something like rough translation invariance and it doesn't cost us any more parameters. Now, it does cost us something, no? we, because we now have four by four instead of nine by nine parameters. So now this gotten smaller. Now in the end, that's what we want. Now we start with big images. We want to come out with like, yes, is this an X or is this a zero? Is this a cat or is this a dog? But at the same time, if I take a network and I force it to have very few, uh, very few channels, I force it to lose some important information. In any case, we will have a bunch of filters. Now, like you saw the three filters that we introduced, we can apply it, we can do the max pull for all of them, as this will be one big tensor. There's an operation that just operates on the tensor. And here we have all that information there. Keep in mind that now this has a certain amount of invariance. We can locally move a feature without changing anything. And of course, we'll have multiple channels and multiple relus. And now I want you to implement max pooling and really make sure that you understand this because you'll be using a lot of max pooling in your deep learning life.